Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Jake Rochal. Jake, how are you? I'm doing well. Jake, it's been a while since we've seen you fight. What have you been up to? <laughs> well, uh, training. That's pretty much it. I actually, my last fight was last July, and I broke my hand in that fight, which required uh, surgery. I got to take six screws, but my hand so. It took quite a while to get back to where I could train 100%. It probably took about five months. So, um, other than that, I've been I've been back since you know pretty much the first of the year training full speed, 100%. Looking for a fight, just haven't found anything yet. It's been it's been quite the task. Because I've been wondering, because at this point last year you had two fights already. You're just not getting offers, or now you're just getting back healthy and you're pursuing more fights. What's been going on? It's just been tough, man. I've been looking for, uh, you know, for a quality opponent, and um, it's just been a tough, it's been a tough road. It's kind of a tough situation, you know. I was pretty much taking fights with anybody I could get last year, you know, and I've been trying to be a little bit, uh, you know, I've been trying to get in the ring with somebody tough and somebody with a, you know, with a name behind them, and it's, it's been, uh, it's just kind of a tough situation, you know. You've fought for Titan Fighting Championships before. Anthony Johnson just signed with them. I was surprised that you didn't get that call to go fight him because you have experience in that organization. Did you contact them, pursue them to try to get that fight? Yeah, we did. As a matter of fact, we did. But I was wanting to fight at 205, um, and Anthony's wanting to fight at 85. I'm still, I'm kind of wanting to fight at 205 right now at this, at this point in my career. And uh, I figured it'd be something Anthony Johnson would be interested in, but he wasn't. He was wanting to fight at 85, and we just couldn't, we couldn't get it together, you know. But that was definitely, I mean, as soon as we found out that he signed with Titan, we called him and, uh, and talked to the promoter that, that same day. So, you know, it was something we looked into. It just, uh, I guess we couldn't come to, you know, just the, the weight issue, I guess, is what I, is what I heard was, uh, was, the, was the thing. Do you still have a contract with them? No, uh, no, I just had a one fight, you know, one fight deal with Titan. So I actually took a, that fight I took for Titan, I took on like three days notice. They had somebody drop out and they were looking for somebody to fight, so I jumped in there. Why the move to 205 pounds? It, it's just a struggle for me to make 185. It's really, really hard on my body, and uh, I just feel like I'm going to be a better fighter at 205. Um, not going to be the biggest guy out there, but. I'm going to be physically and mentally. I'm going to be in a better place when I get out there, and, and I'm going to be able to be a. I'm going to be able to be a better fighter at 205 than I have been at 85. You're six and one with one no contest since leaving the UFC, and the only loss that you had, you avenged that loss in your last fight against Matt Horwich. What do you think you have to do to get back there? And is that something that you're pursuing? Is that your goal is to be back in the UFC? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's my goal to be back in the UFC. I don't know what I need to do to, to be back there. I think that's kind of why we've been looking for a bigger name fight. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's not a blueprint to get yourself back there. You know, I just got to keep plugging away and keep working hard. And sooner or later, I'll get my opportunity again. Is there a possibility that you could be in strike force? Because right now their 185, 205 pound division is not a whole lot of depth there. Is that another thing that maybe you and your management are going to be looking into? I mean, it's not, not saying it's not an option, but it's not really the, where I want to go. You know, I want to be in the UFC. They're the biggest promotion in the world. Uh, they've got the best fans in the world, the best following. Um, you know, they've got the best fighters in the world. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to fight at. Your UFC run, you were kind of thrown to the wolves immediately. Your first fight was against Dan Miller. Uh, he came in on short notice because Alessio Sakara was supposed to be your original opponent. You fought Chris Levin, you fought Kendall Grove. Do you think you were treated fairly with the UFC? Because you took on three really tough guys and you submitted Chris Levin as one of the top middleweights in the world. Yeah, I think I was. Um, you know, I was definitely young in my career and inexperienced, and that played a, uh, a role in the, to both of my losses. Uh, but, you know, I have no I have no quarry with the, the opponents they gave me. They were all guys that I was capable of beating. I just didn't, I didn't go out and, and do what I needed to do. Now, you fought one time with Bellator. What happened with them? Why haven't we seen you get into a tournament? Have you been in contact with them? What was the deal with them? Sure. Same sort of thing, you know. Bellator is, is doing a really good job, and they've got a they've got a great thing going on. But it's a long deal to get into the Bellator tournament. It's a long contract you set yourself up to, and uh, it's just like I said, it's not. Some, I want to fight the UFC, man. I want to fight the best guys out there. I want to fight the biggest promotion. It's you know that's just where I want to be, and I'll, I'll keep doing what I need to do to get myself back there. 
But being in a long-term contract with somebody else is not something I'm really interested in. My fight for Bellator was, uh, you know, on the undercard part, and it was just a one-fight deal, you know. They they had some other, you know, I think they had a, that fight was in Oklahoma, and they used one of the promoters there in Oklahoma to help them set up the undercard fight, and that's how I was on the, you know, on the Bellator, uh, on the Bellator show there. You were supposed to have a fight with King of the Cage in, in my area, in Detroit. You were supposed to fight Jeremy Horn. It didn't happen because you had a neck injury. Do you still have a contract with them? Do you still owe them one fight? No, uh-uh. no. I actually had a, I actually had a contract with King of the Cage for like three fights, I think it was. But after I, after my neck injury, King of the Cage lost their TV deal with HD Man, I think it was, and that was part of my contract that the, the fights had to be, you know, that were to be televised, and they ended up letting us out of that contract. You were supposed to fight Jeremy Horn. How disappointed were you that that fight didn't happen because a win over him would have probably got you in a better situation to go to a big show? How disappointed yeah, was that for I you? I mean, that was, I was so excited about that fight. Jeremy Horn is a, is a veteran in the sport, and, you know, somebody that everybody knows and it's, it's just so experienced I was really really excited about that fight it was that was a big disappointment a big letdown for me I, I felt really terrible for King of the Cage and all the fans and, and Jeremy Horner you know just everybody it was just a crappy deal um, it, it, and uh, man I felt bad about that but you know that would have been a fight I would have loved to have had on my like you know to look back on and say that I fought Jeremy Horn. it would have been a pretty you know pretty cool stat to go back to what has been the hardest part for you securing fights? Is it the pay? Is it opponents? What exactly has prevented you from being a lot more active? Um, it's mainly, I mean, both. It, it comes to both sometimes, you know. And I'm not saying, the, the pay is probably the, the least part of it, you know. It's more trying to get the right opponent and trying to get somebody to put it on, you know. Like, you get to these promotions that, that can actually get guys with bigger names and they don't want to... They don't want to put you on their show for just one fight. They want you to sign a deal to fight for them for five, you know, for five fights. And it's just been kind of a struggle, you know. Just a, a lot of different things come into play. Who are some fighters that are on your radar, if any? Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm looking for anybody to anybody good to a fight. I'll fight anybody good to a fight. Anybody out there. Does it have anybody, to be? Does it have to be a guy who's you know fought? UFC, Strike Force, Bellator guy who you know had some big I mean, name, or are you just looking for anybody? I, I mean, I'm looking for anybody with a good record, you know, a good record, a tough guy, a quality opponent. Not necessarily. I mean, I would love somebody with a name that's fought the UFC before, uh, but I mean, there's, I mean, anybody really. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I know it might be a little bit hard, but could you go back to when you were released by the UFC? What exactly did they tell you? Um. You know, they didn't talk to me, they talked to my manager, so it's all kind of, uh, you know, I just got a second-hand story about it, but pretty much said that I just needed to go out and get some more experience and get a, you know, just get some more wins under my belt. Could you compare and contrast the life inside the UFC and life outside the UFC on the regional circuit? I mean, it's night and day. I mean, that's the easiest way to put it, you know, it really is night and day. There they're a professional organization uh, that, you know, they run their company and their fight, they take care of their fighters and they, they run their company to the highest standards that you get out here, you get outside of that and you notice, you, you find out how spoiled you were, how, how lucky you were to be in there and how well they take care of you and, and not even just the financial part, but just uh, you know, how well their shows are put on and the, the, how professional the other fighters, you know, as far as the other fighters are, and you don't have people not showing up for fights, fights get canceled, they're not making weight. Uh, it's just so many things outside of the UFC that, that can go on. How many fights would you like to take uh, this year, I mean, I, like we've said uh, numerous times that you've had trouble finding fights, but ideally, how many fights would you like to take, you know, now f- till the end of the year? Three, four, is that a good number? Yeah, somewhere in there would be great. I mean, if I could get three fights by the end of this year, I would be, pumped. you know, I, that would be awesome. Uh, especially, and I say that with, the, you know, the way that my years started out and the struggles we kind of had to have fights. I actually had a fight that I was supposed to fight two weeks ago uh, against a guy 
guy named Matt Thompson and uh, here for a promotion in Dallas. And like a week and a half before the fight, uh, they just canceled the whole show, the whole part. So, you know, you put whatever eight weeks in, or six and a half weeks of getting ready for the fight in and, and have it canceled, you know, the week before, pretty crappy deal. So just stuff like that happens. But yeah, like I said, it, 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 three fights by the end of this year would be would be awesome. Jake, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Oh, man, I just, if anybody's out there that doesn't already, follow me on Twitter. I really appreciate the fan support. And uh, keep watching me. I'll make it back and I'll be fighting the UFC before too long. Jake, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.